body has a mind of its own. I keep on trying to tell others this, but nobody seems to believe me. I wake up almost every night choking. It always turn out that my own hands are trying to strangle me while I sleep. And it's just not my hands that are trying to kill me. Once or twice, my own feet also have made me walk the opposite direction of where I wanted to go and made me go right into busy traffic. I was almost killed then. What is a person supposed to do when their own body apparently hates them and wants them dead? I'm so tired of always fighting my own body for control. It's as if I've been possessed. I've searched all over the internet to see if there was a disorder or a disease that made me this way. At least then, I could be treated for it. However, there was absolutely nothing. Except for a movie called Idle Hand. I watched it and it turned out to be some sort of horror comedy that didn't really shed any light on what I might be going through. Everything seems to suggest that I'm being possessed, but my therapist just says that I'm suffering a mental breakdown. If only it could be that simple. The horrible dreams I had for weeks almost make zero sense. In those dreams, some floating entity claims to be my physical body. However, it tells me that it hates my head and feels that the body parts from the neck up is defiling the beauty of the body itself. So it needs to get rid of the head in some way. Sounds like apotemnophilia, a mental disorder where a person feels compelled to cut off most of his limbs to feel complete. But that still doesn't describe what I'm going through at all. After all, I've never heard of an apotemnophile wanting to remove their own head. And certainly not of people's bodies acting against their own wills. My therapist gave me medication for it, but it doesn't seem to be working. In fact, it only makes things worse. It just makes whatever part of me that still managed to keep control over my body lose control. When I'm heavily medicated, my body moves of its own volition. It always makes me feel like I'm sleepwalking every time. Only, I'm fully awake each time. It finally came all to a head one day when my buddy walked down to the kitchen and grabbed the kitchen knife. I panicked at first because I didn't know what my body was going to do with it, but I knew it wouldn't be good at all. My body started cutting itself very slowly around the neck area, sending dark delicious shivers of pleasure up my spine. I was puzzled at first because I was expecting a massive amount of pain. This was supposed to hurt, right? Yet with every cut, I felt Nothing but pleasure. There was a point where a part of me regretted having fought against this for so long. But when my neck actually started to detach from the body itself, I felt a surge of panic again. Wouldn't I die if this was to continue? I couldn't let this go on no matter how good it felt. So I tried fighting for control over my own body, but it was in vain. 
My hands grabbed both sides of my head and started yanking upwards. The pain I felt then were exquisite as the body tried to tear my head off. I couldn't help but smile a little at how strange this situation was. Was this situation with my body being possessed actually for real? Or am I but a mental ill person who were killing herself for no good reason? I suppose it didn't really matter anymore. I was about to die. I figured then that I might as well enjoy this sensation for as long as I was alive. Part of me felt sorry over the fact that my friends and family was going to have a horrible shock when they found this grisly scene. The body itself became frustrated, as seeing the neck and spine bones were connected firmly to each other and wouldn't detach no matter how hard the hands were trying. The body moved to the garage. But I could barely see anything as seeing my head kept on lolling back and forth uncontrollably. I couldn't hold up my own head due to my neck muscles being completely severed and I discovered that I couldn't speak anymore no matter how much I tried to. I suppose this was logical as well considering that my vocal cords were cut along with the neck muscles. Buddy grabbed something and walked back to the kitchen where there was better light. It turned out to be a table saw, and the buddy bent over on the table and forced my head to tilt at a certain tilt. It then started sewing away. Again, I started feeling the dark pleasures that one could only feel from this kind of pain. The moment the head and body started to detach at least, it was unlike anything I had ever felt in my whole life. But there was something weird going on. I was still fully aware and I still felt alive, despite the fact that my head and body had separated for good. Shouldn't I be dead? It was then I heard somebody enter the house, calling for me. It was my parents. They entered the kitchen and they became quiet still, as they took in the horrible scene before them. The kitchen was a huge bloody mess with my head resting on the countertop. But instead of screaming and crying like I expect them to, they just started laughing. How wonderful. Our darling daughter has finally grown up, my mom says. At first, I'm confused. Because I'm 19 years old, so that would make me an adult, right? And why is she acting like the side of my severed head and body is normal? My dad is smiling. I was starting to worry about her, you know. I wasn't sure when you told me that we should hold off on telling her about the facts of life. After all, she's such a naive young thing. I swear she honestly thought she was human for a while there. What? I'm not human? Then what am I? To my surprise, my parents started ripping off their own heads. They did it with such ease and quickness that their blood started spraying everywhere. The bodies of my parents set their own heads right next to me. My mom's body and made it so that my head was sitting upright and it was then I was able to see that my body was standing up on its own. So my body was still alive too. Now that you finally cut off your head, 
it's time for you to feed upon human flesh. Come with us and we'll show you how to live your new life. The disembodied voice came out of my mother's headless body. To be honest, I'm really relieved to be finally rid of those heads. They were getting too old for me. I'm looking forward to getting some fresh heads. Dad's body spoke. With that, the three headless bodies embraced each other and they left the kitchen, abandoning me and the heads of my parents. I looked at the head of my parents trying to get them to react to me. Anything. But they just acted like normal severed heads. Completely dead and unresponsive. It was a week before my friends came looking for me, and unlike my parents, they freaked out big time when they saw me in the kitchen. The police was called and so on forth. It was clear that those were normal human beings. For a while there, I thought of playing dead, but the idea of a live burial or even being cremated freaked me out. After all, that would be what they would do with a dead head, right? So, at the risk of having those humans freaked out even more, I made sure to let them know that I was alive by blinking my eyes at them. I still couldn't speak. Seems that I was permanently mute now. I'm now housed inside a secret government building. I have to say, what goes on in those top secret buildings is truly interesting. I now communicate with scientists of all sorts and I always feel such pleasure when they perform their experiments on me. I have to say being electrocuted is the best. I've got over losing my body. I was depressed at first and even angry at it for making me into the worst kind of cripple. But now I'm fine. As long as I'm constantly tortured and experimented on by those wonderful scientists, I don't care anymore about my old life. I do wonder what I am if I'm not human though. <laughs>